Hello, welcome to Endor N-Gauge Model Railway. I've been having recurring problems with one of my solenoid point motors and finally decided to replace it with a servo motor. In a previous video, nine months ago, I described the issues with the solenoid motor and had managed to get it working again by removing a microswitch that it used to change with the points. I didn't really trust it though, and it wasn't particularly long until it became unreliable again. It seems like over the summer the solenoid started working properly again, and returned to regularly failing in the last few weeks, so the problem might have been partially related to temperature. I've also noticed that my sidings are a bit wavy, and I don't think they used to be like that. The base of this railway is a cheap door. Most of its internal structure is basically cardboard, and I wonder if it's starting to warp a bit. If so, that would add a bend to the brass tube that the point rod goes through, increasing resistance. I'm not sure how being warm would help it work better though. Regardless, a servo motor would easily have enough strength to switch this point, and I was fed up of it malfunctioning. There's been a hole in the scenery around the point motor for nine months, so it was easy to disconnect and remove it. I decided to keep the existing connection to the point rod, and had an offcut of rodding from one of the solenoid motors which would fit an existing hull. A hole in the servo horn needed reaming to fit the rod. Just plonked onto the base, the servo horn would be quite high above the point rod, and didn't look like it would be likely to work, so I decided to sink the servo into the door. I tried using my cheap rotary cutting tool, but it was a bit pathetic. The top and bottom layers of wood on this door are fairly soft and thin, but it still had trouble cutting through. It also has trouble cutting through metal, even though it's advertised as being for jewellery making, so I think I might have to replace it with something better before long. In the end, I switched to drilling a couple of 10mm holes and then using a Stanley knife and some files to get the hole to the right size. I've since bought a small modeler saw that might be more suitable for this kind of thing in the future. I wanted the hole to fit around the servo snugly, but had to make it slightly longer so I could manoeuvre the servo in. The cable comes out of a side that has a bracket on it, but there was enough space inside the door for the cables to loop under the servo and come up out of a notch on a different side. Before trying to connect the servo to the point rod, I found the duty cycle values needed to get it into roughly the right position, from trial and error. From my signal animation a couple of months ago, I already had code I could quickly copy and adapt, and this Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller. It even still had the cables attached. I then connected the servo horn to the point rodding, and made more adjustments. Because the horn is relatively far away from the point rod, the connection between them can lean at an angle when it comes up against the resistance of the points, so I gradually increased the range of the servo's movement until the points were switching reliably. Now for the physically easiest, but mentally hardest part. How would I control this from the point switches? Unlike my earlier above-board electronics, I didn't make plans for the underboard elements, so I had to do a little bit of investigation. Happily, I still had a small number of general purpose input output pins available on the points microcontroller, so I don't need to find out how to get multiple Raspberry Pi Picos to communicate with each other, at least until I introduce servo controlled signals at some point. It's worth noting that although I'd removed a solenoid point motor, it was sharing its power with the other solenoid point motor for the other half of the crossing, so it didn't free up any pins on the Pico. Now onto what for me is much firmer ground, software. One of the things I like about the Raspberry Pi over an Arduino, besides being a quarter of the price, is that the go-to programming language for it is Python. I've got reasonable experience programming in C, but that's in the distant past and I much prefer Python. The points class that I wrote a while ago had evolved to assume solenoid motors were in use, which was true for all of the points on Endo at that time, but a lot of the existing logic was still applicable to servo-controlled points. I kept the common logic in the points class and made two new, more specific types of points for solenoids and servos, each one adding the specifics for the motor type. I never went so far as adding proper test code for this project when I originally wrote it, so before going any further I ran the updated code on the layout to see if the remaining solenoid points still worked as before. This kind of thing rarely works first time, so much so that if it did I would be deeply suspicious that it was still the original code running on the Pico. After ironing out a few noddy errors, all was working as intended. I don't have many of the right cables for the connectors the servo comes with, and they're all pretty short and I think are meant for using prototyping, so I cut off the connector and replaced it with a terminal block. Now for the more tricky bit as far as I'm concerned, working out what wires should go where so it all works. I'm still not very knowledgeable or confident with electronics, 
but I do know for sure that for current to flow in a wire there needs to be a circuit. Current can't flow in a wire to nowhere. In a previous video I talked about how the relay module boards I've got have two terminals for the power and one terminal per control signal. So if a power supply is connected then that's those two terminals used up. How can current flow through the signal wire from a Raspberry Pi Pico? The only way I've come across is to connect the ground, or zero volts, of the power supply to the ground pins on the Pico. And that's what I've done for all of my relay modules. I applied the same reasoning to the servo motor with some temporary wires connecting its ground wire to the ground or negative or zero of the relay circuit since that's already connected to one of the ground pins on the Pico. I connected its 5 volt cable to the VBUS pin on the Pico, which I've read is a direct connection to the power coming from the USB cable that powers the Pico. When I tested it, only the solenoid point was changing, but which element wasn't working, the wiring or the code changes? I'd written the points class to only try changing a point's position if it's not already physically in the desired position. That's useful for solenoid controlled points because it prevents accidentally burning out the solenoid motor but that protection isn't needed for the servo. It's just getting a digital signal telling it which position it should be in, and if it's already in that position, then it doesn't do anything. I decided to override part of the code in the servo points class, so the Pico always sends the position instruction, and was delighted when this worked, inasmuch as the Pico was able to move the servo, proving the wiring approach was viable. But there was clearly a logic flaw somewhere that needed fixing. There was a noticeable delay in the servo moving compared with the solenoid. That's mainly because I've got deliberate pauses when operating the relays for the solenoid, to make sure they've got time to switch and time to deliver a decent punch of power. The solenoids are also much quicker to move than the servo. I've always referred to the points on the outer track as point 9, and I've added control of them immediately after point 8, so the code was effectively waiting for point 8 to finish moving before considering point 9. I decided I'd swap them so the signal to the point 9 servo was sent first. The code could then move on to dealing with the relays while the servo sorted itself out. That worked nicely. I also realised what the logic problem was. The position feedback microswitch is shared between point 8 and 9, but is only physically connected to point 8. By the time the code came to deal with point 9, point 8 had already moved and changed the value of the position feedback. There was a clue to that in the output of my program that I hadn't noticed. You can see it say both the inner and outer points are already set to diverge. Fine. When told to set them to a head, it does that for the inner points, but when it comes to the outer points, it says they're already in that position. Changing the code to deal with the outer points before the inner points gets around that problem, so I was able to change the servo points class back to how it worked before. So, that was the wiring approach and code changes both proven. Next up was a permanent wiring solution. The USB mains adapter I've got on the railway has three USB sockets, and I bought these cheap breakout boards to use as an easy way of getting a 5 volt power supply. If I were to power the servo from one of these, then I'd need to connect its ground to both the servo and the Raspberry Pi Pico. But I wondered if since this would be powered from the same plug, if that meant its ground would already be connected. So, there was still a little experimentation to do. I screwed the breakout into a temporary location where there was already a screw hole, connected a USB cable and then connected the 5 volt terminal of the servo to it. I left the ground connection of the servo as it already was. And it worked! Keeping track of what's connected to what is getting tricky and I think I'll need to make myself some diagrams. The negative of the 12 volt relay power circuit feels like it's really becoming a common ground for a lot of things now. Ultimately, when wondering about where to put the USB breakout board, I decided to just use the VBUS terminal from the Pico. From what I've read, I don't think using that places any load on the Pico's internals. What swayed me was the realisation I could replace a two terminal block on the Pico with a three terminal block and get the right connections. The prongs on these blue blocks are a tight fit into the holes on the Pico, and there's double the spacing between prongs and holes. They're not designed for use together but it means I get a good connection without having to do any soldering. With all the final wiring done, trains could run again. I did a little bit of testing, but there wasn't really anything that could go wrong at this stage. The frog power is set by microswitches, and none of the wiring to those had changed. 
I'll leave the hole in the scenery for a while. I want to be sure this is reliable before I lock it away, but it's off to a good start. That's all for now. Bye bye.